Today we're going to be taking a look at the first player Fire Rose keyboard. It might seem very similar to other keyboards, well frankly because a lot of keyboards are very similar, but it might also be a little bit smarter than other keyboards for a few small reasons that might give it the upper edge. So here we have it, the Fire Rose keyboard from first player, and the, the first thing we just gotta do is go over basically the specs and the features of this keyboard so we know what all it has to offer. So to start things off, it has double colored injected molded keycaps, and then it has anti-ghosting, 104 key rollover, and 50 million times clicks are what the blue switches are rated at. Obviously these blue switches are the tactile and clicky ones, so these are pretty clicky. They do get a little bit loud if you are using them, so um, if you're really worried about noise, you gotta be a little bit aware of that. It's not like it's outlandishly loud, but they definitely are audible, so something to be aware of. You'll hear them a little bit in a second when we go over the RGB settings of the keyboard. It's also supposedly water and dust proof. So waterproof meaning that it should be safe if you get water on it. I don't know if you wanna go outside and spray it with a hose. I was tempted to do that, but I don't really wanna ruin it, so I'm not going to. But know that it is supposedly rated to be waterproof, or at least helpful there if you happen to spill a drink on it, although I recommend not doing that anyways. So that is one of the things you can look forward to with this keyboard. Now, it also on the very back of it has rubberized feet at the bottom and then at the top that then do flip out. They make a very strong clicky sound as well. When you do that, they uh, kind of lock into place really well and you can elevate the keyboard if that's the way you like to use your keyboard to play with it. I use it down. Um, that's pretty strong feeling. Um, along the top of the keyboard, on the face of the keyboard, it's actually a very solid metal, giving this a very heavy and chunky feel. There's like really not a lot of flex you can get with it, which makes it feel a lot stronger. The bottom is plastic. It isn't a plastic piece, but that top part is metal. So it does give it some just stability. And I do really like that. It makes it feel just like a very solid, solid keyboard. So um, really probably not as fragile as some other ones that are just all plastic design. Um, so that's something I actually really do like about this. There is two um, screw holes up at the top where you could screw that off and you could probably take everything apart if you really needed to. And one of the other things that this keyboard does offer out of the box is it comes with the keycap removers and then it also comes with a switch remover and a few replacement switches. So if you have a switch that just stops responding maybe for some reason or one goes bad or let's say you did spill something on it like jelly, who knows, I don't know why there's jelly on your keyboard, but you're crazy and you like to eat jelly at your desk, you can remove switch and you can replace it. So you have replacement switches, which is something I actually have never received with any other mechanical keyboard I've ever bought or tested. So, um, and I've reviewed not a million on my channel, but I've tested a lot of keyboards and this is the first one that has come with replacement switches. And I think that's kind of neat and kind of cool. Just kind of like a little added bonus. Um, it also has its RGB lighting. We're gonna jump to that in just one second so you can see how all of those look and we can go through and see how it all functions. But I will say now, it does seem very familiar to a keyboard I recently reviewed. And we're gonna get into that in just a second too. So let's go ahead and look at the RGB settings and then we'll come back and see why it seems so familiar. All right, so looking at the RGB features of the keyboard, this might seem a little bit similar, but let's just go ahead and jump into it. So right now we're looking at rainbow mode. To control the functions, we're gonna use the function button and we're gonna use the insert or M that they put on it up here to then cycle through the different available RGB settings. So this is a line one, we have a ripple, then we have a ripple through just the individual line and not ripple out. Then we have this kind of like wave motioning one. We have like a kind of like a pulsing and then I think we have like a color change, a slow fade to different colors. And then we have just your steady color, which is just the same color full on. And then custom settings we'll get to just in a second. So you have those available to you. Now within those, you can obviously go in and you can change the color of them with the delete button. So all of them, you can change them up by just pressing the delete button. You can control the brightness with up and down. It can control the speed if it has animation up and down with the forward and backward keys. You can also hear the tactile clickiness of these buttons right now too, as I'm obviously clicking them. So, audible, yes, but not crazy terrible, but you know, they do have that actual audible sound. So if we go back to like a manual mode, there's these settings up here that are preloaded like WASD, you have the QWER, 
you have just, you know, individual ones that are built for specific games that you might want lit up. Now, obviously this one I've been screwing around with because this keyboard, like another keyboard that I looked at recently, can have manual mode where you can press the home button while holding function. You get the flashing lights up at the top and then you can go in and you can change all the key colors individually to whatever you want. So you can change them to whatever color you want. You can get in and customize each individual key. So that is another option that you do have available to you if you want to customize, you know, your keyboard even further. So to lock this in, let's say this is exactly how I want it. Then you just press home again while holding that function button. It stops flashing and those are built in that way. You can even cycle back around through the available things and it will always be there and hold that memory. It has the built-in memory to do that. So it has very similar lighting to a previous keyboard that I looked at, but there's a reason for that. You also have um, function, you can open up things like your music player, you can control sound and volume, you can mute things fast. If you want the just the lights off, you can just turn the lights off up there too. You can obviously turn it back on really simply too. So there are good options with it for the function button and the home and stuff, and you can lock windows and other things. So it has good built-in lighting that's very simple to use that you don't have to have third-party software for always a good thing. So you may have noticed that the lighting is very similar and controls very similarly to the Aki keyboard I recently reviewed. And that's because I'm pretty positive that the same third party company creates both this keyboard and that Aki keyboard and actually a handful of other keyboards just on Amazon all around the internet. They're all probably the exact same underneath. Then what the differences are, are the price the features it comes with, or at least the extra add-ons it comes with, and then the overall design and look of like the outside of the keyboard, such as if the actual buttons look different, or if like the face of it's different, like with this Fire Rose, it's like this good metal. On the Aki, it was like that brushed looking uh, silver. And realistically, those are about the only differences to those keyboards. Underneath, the switches are the same. So it comes down to, does anybody give you anything extra with them? For the Fire Rose, they do come with those switches that you can remove and replace, which I think is kind of neat. And then it also comes at currently, I think a lower price. Uh, this right now on Amazon is about 45 US dollars, which is really good value for a mechanical keyboard, in my opinion, that at least feels pretty premium for its, I mean, compared to its actual price. So um, I saw previously in that other video that people were like, why is this keyboard a ripoff of blah? Well, really, they're not all, they're not a ripoff of any of the other ones. They're all made by the same company and then they just put their own little branding on top of it. And the same thing goes for almost all other keyboards too, if you're looking at Corsairs and other companies. Like, yes, they design the outside of it, but underneath those switches from Cherry MX are really like the heart and soul of the keyboard and the, the clicks and the functionality and what you're really paying for in a keyboard. So. You can say it's a ripoff. Chances are they're not really ripping off anyone. They're all buying it from the same exact vendor who actually builds and manufactures it. So remember that when you're looking at keyboards and make sure you compare more and more keyboards if you're looking at a handful and see if they look similar and see if you can find videos like this one where, where I'm pointing out like those are the same thing. So don't get too mad about it looking like a ripoff. They're all ripoff of each other. They're all built the same exact way. So that's the Fire Rose. I like it overall. It feels really, really strong and sturdy for the most part. It's got the same controllable um, RGB like the Aki I looked at that I do like that it controls through this, but it doesn't necessarily need a program running on your computer. I'm a big fan of that. Um, I, like I said, I just, I feel like that's bloatware, so I don't like those typically anymore. Um, and it has some nice little add-ons. It comes with a disc, comes with uh, just like the instructions, and it comes with those switches that you can remove and replace. So overall, it seems like a pretty good value to me, and I do like it, and it's just, like I said, it feels just more premium than its price suggests, which is always a good thing. It's actually a little surprising. Um, but I'd like to know what you guys think about this keyboard down below in the comments, or any other keyboards, if you want me to look at any others in the future, or if you have questions for me, put them down there as well. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see all of you in the next video.